Welcome to The Explainer. So you're an IT pro and you're looking to get certified in modern device management. You're in exactly the right place. Today, we are cracking the code on the Microsoft MD-102 Endpoint Administrator exam. And my goal here is super simple, to give you a really clear, actionable roadmap so you can walk into that exam and pass with confidence. Let's get right into it. So here's the game plan for today. First, we're going to define what this exam is all about and where it fits in the whole Microsoft world. Then, and this is crucial, we'll break down the official blueprint, what's on the test, including some massive new updates you absolutely need to know about. After that, we'll build your study toolkit with the best resources out there and I'll share some insider tips from people who've actually passed. And finally, we'll look at your path forward to getting certified. All right, first things first, before we get into the weeds, let's get our bearings. What exactly is the MD-102 exam? And you know, why should you even care? Let's lay the groundwork. Okay, let's clear something up right away, because this confuses a lot of people. You might have heard about the MD-100 and the MD-101 exams. Well, forget about them. They're gone, retired. They have been totally replaced and rolled into one single exam, the MD-102. So seriously, if you see any study guides or old forum posts talking about the 100 or 101, just know they're out of date. Your entire focus needs to be on the MD-102. So what does passing this exam actually prove? Well, in a nutshell, it says you know your stuff when it comes to deploying, managing, and most importantly, securing all the endpoints in a Microsoft 365 environment. We're talking desktops, laptops, mobile devices, the whole shebang. If you're a sysadmin, in IT support, or a modern desktop engineer, this is built for you. It shows you can handle security, access, apps, and updates using those core tools like Microsoft Intune and Microsoft Entra ID. Okay, let's talk about the blueprint. This is, without a doubt, the most important part of your prep. Why? Because this is Microsoft literally telling you, hey, this is what we're going to test you on. If you understand these domains and how much they're worth, you can study smart, not just hard. Now, look at this chart closely. And I mean, really closely, especially if you're taking your exam before September 17th, 2024. This is your map. Look at that massive slice of the pie. A whopping 40 to 45% is all about managing, maintaining, and protecting devices. That right there, that is your number one study priority. Everything else is important, sure, but that section has the most weight by far. The takeaway is crystal clear. You need to live and breathe device management in Intune. Master that, and you are well on your way. But wait, hold on, because this is a big deal and you need to hear this. Microsoft is changing the exam. If you're planning to take it on or after September 17th, 2024, that blueprint we just looked at, it's changing. So let's see what's coming. And here it is, the side-by-side -side comparison. On the left, you see the current structure. On the right, the new one. So what's the big change? Well, they're taking those old sections on deploying Windows and managing identity and combining them into a brand new heavy hitting section called Prepare Infrastructure. And the huge device management part is being split into two more focused areas, one for manage and maintain and another for protect. It's a pretty big restructure, but it actually makes a lot more sense. It follows a logical flow from getting your infrastructure ready all the way to locking down the devices that run on it. You know, no matter which version of the exam you end up taking, the real mission behind it stays the same. This test isn't just about memorizing settings or knowing which button to click in a portal. It's really testing your ability to think strategically. It's about being able to plan and implement a whole modern workplace strategy that actually solves a company's real-world business problems and doing it all securely and efficiently. Okay, so you know what's on the exam. The big question is, how in the world do you learn it all? Well. Don't worry, let's build your ultimate study toolkit. We've gone out and gathered the absolute best, most recommended resources to get you ready for this. All right, here are your go-to resources. You have to start with the official Microsoft Learn Path. That's your foundation. Then, once you feel like you have a handle on things, test yourself with the practice assessments. Start with the free one from Microsoft, but then, if you really want a challenge, get the Measure Up Practice Tests. Everybody says they're actually harder than the real exam, which is perfect practice. For all you visual learners, the Intune Training channel on YouTube is just fantastic. And of course, if you need a deep, structured course, you've got great options like ACI Learning or Pluralsight. Just mix and match to find what works for you. But listen, if you only take one piece of advice from this entire section, please let it be this one. I mean it. Reading about this stuff is fine, but doing it is everything. This quote from Reddit user Autopilot File says it all. 
get a free Microsoft 365 developer tenant. It is the single most important study tool you can have. It's your personal sandbox. You can go in there, build things, break things, and then learn how to fix them with zero consequences. Seriously, this hands-on experience is absolutely non-negotiable if you want to pass. So, we've covered what to study. Now, let's shift gears and talk about how to take the exam. We've got some amazing real-world advice from people who have been there, done that, and got the certificate. This is all about learning to think like the people who actually write the questions. This is it. This is the question on everyone's mind. It's one thing to study the material, but what's it actually feel like to sit for the MD-102? Is it just going to be a bunch of multiple-choice questions testing your memory? Well, not quite. This insight right here is pure gold. You need to think of the MD-102 as a reading comprehension test just as much as a technical one. The questions can be long, they can be wordy, and just like this user says, there is often an obvious answer that is complete and total bait. It's designed to catch you if you're rushing. You have to train yourself to slow down, read every single word, and find that one key phrase that changes everything and points you to the correct answer. And here's another piece of advice that just perfectly captures the feel of this exam. This one really hits home. You're not always going to look at the options and see one perfect answer that jumps out at you. A lot of the time, your job is to eliminate the two or three choices that are definitely wrong and then be forced to pick the one that feels, like this user says, the least incorrect. It's a real test of your judgment and your ability to weigh options, not just pure recall. So let's turn all that great advice into a simple four-step strategy for exam day. Number one, read every single word carefully. Number two, be a detective. Actively look for those tricky bait answers and eliminate them. Three, use the open book MS Learn Access, but do it strategically. We'll talk more about that in a second. And number four, use that flag for review button. If you are not 100% certain, flag it, move on, get the easy points, and then circle back to the tough ones at the end. It's all about managing your time. Now about that open book part. Yes, the MD-102 lets you access Microsoft Learn during the exam, but there are some major catches. It opens in a little side-by-side -side window, and, this is the big one, you cannot use Control-F to search the page. You have to use the site's own built-in search bar, which can be clunky and slow. Because of this, the advice from the community is almost unanimous. Don't lean on it. Answer everything you know first. Flag the questions you're unsure about. Then, and only then, at the very end, use your remaining time to look up the answers for those flagged questions. And please, practice using the Learn search bar before your exam day so you know how it works. We've covered the what, the why, and the how. Let's bring it all home and lay out your path forward, from crushing this exam to really taking the next big step in your IT career. And here it is. This is the number you need to burn into your brain, 700. The exam is scored on a scale up to 1,000. You don't need a perfect score. You don't need 950. You just need to clear that 700 hurdle. That's the finish line. Keep that number in your sights. So let's just do a quick recap of the most important takeaways. First, know your exam blueprint inside and out, especially with those September changes coming. Second, get that free developer tenant and get your hands dirty. It is absolutely non-negotiable. Third, read the questions like a hawk to avoid the bait. Fourth, use MS Learn, but use it strategically at the end. And here's a little bonus tip. Once you pass, don't forget you have to renew your certification every year, but the renewal is free and you do it online. And there you have it. You have the complete roadmap. You know what to study, you know how to study, and you know how to approach the exam itself. This certification is a seriously powerful tool. It's a validation of your skills in a field that is only growing in demand. You have the plan. The only question left is are you ready to go out and build your modern workplace career? Thanks for watching.